technology. I don't know what else you could possibly be hoping for, but I can guarantee you this. My team and the people who are in Hustlers University, all of us who are ahead of the curve, are going to become monumentally more successful than you could possibly imagine. They say, decouple your time and your money. You have to make sure you're not using your time for money because you run out of time. Machines don't run out of time. Machines run around the clock. The money never ends. It's going to be have-nots and have-yachts. It's going to be people with Bentleys and pennies. And you have to make a choice which team you want to be on. Hustlers University is the only place where you'll learn how to make money with the machine mind right now today. Change the way the entire world functions. And you don't even have... And some people will do it when they lose, but the true professionals do it when they win. Mm. When my dad was playing a chess game, if he won the game, he would still analyze the game and see if he could have lost, where it could have gone wrong, how he could have won faster, what mistakes he did make, what he did well, what he did wrong, win or lose. So many people will sit in a scenario where everything went wrong and go, in fact, correction, not so many people. I would say 75% of people will not ever self-analyze the situation or in the blame of everyone else. If they went to jail like I did, they'd say, they put me in jail because they're liars and the Matrix did it. Did it. Fine, true. But when I was in jail, I was like, how did I get here? What did I do? What did I say? Who did I piss off? What institutions want me in jail? What did I do that angered them? Me, me, me. I'm taking absolute self-accountability for everything. I'm not blaming any one thing else because if I blame everything else, I have no control. Mm. If I blame myself that I can influence it, I have control over it. So 75% of people blame other people or they blame other things. I lost my business because of COVID. No, you lost your business because of you. I lost my girl because her friends were hoes. No, you lost your girl because of you. You lost your car because of you. And it's all your fault because that's the only thing that gives you control and power. The other 10%, we said 75, that's 85, no, it has to be much higher. Let's say the other 20%, which brings up to 95% of the total of the populace, will look at a situation in which they lose and they might self-analyze and they might try and learn from the loss and they'll try and find the feedback involved in the loss to make sure they don't lose again, which is obviously better than not, feed, not analyzing at all. At all, yeah. And the top 5%, the absolute highest echelon, are people who are going to analyze every decision they've ever made, win or lose. I analyze my wins as well. See where you went right. See, see where, where I went right, see where I went wrong, see where it worked. You need to analyze your whole life. Your life needs to be feedback. You need to sit and it's, it's, it's over 10% into the year now. I wonder if anyone who made a New Year's resolution sits and says, it's over 10% into the year. Am I at 10% of my goal? Because your stupid ass said you were going to be a millionaire when you were drunk on New Year's Eve. Well, you need to have 100 grand saved. Do you have 100,000? Have you even done the feedback on your own goal you made 30 short days ago to realize that you're nowhere near it and you're not gonna make it and you're a loser? No. Oh, I got the rest of the year. Um, and then wonder why they fail. You should have a daily target. And then it's just a full on cycle for them yearly. Of course. You know, gonna be a millionaire next year. And then, of course, and then they just lie. Yeah. So you need to constantly feedback and analyze your life and take time out of scenarios. I do this all the time. There, there's been times I've got up out of bed and I've got ready and I've got my keys and I've got my phone and I've stroked my dog and I've had my coffee. I downed it quickly and it was just the right temperature so it wasn't too hot and it wasn't too cold. And I got in my car, which had already been started my Ferrari, by my security team and it was already warm and I got in and I was out the door. I was like, I got out the door in six minutes. That's, that's like two minutes faster than normal. Yeah, that was good. What did I do good? Well, the coffee. The coffee wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold. Usually it's too hot and I have to wait. Mm. Or it's too cold and I want another one. The coffee was just the right temperature. When was it made? And I'll check the message where I sent them to check make me the a time. coffee. And it sounds yeah. crazy, but I'll, I'll analyze how I left the fucking house while I'm driving. I'll be like, that was fast. That was good. How can we do well that done. again? <laughs> I want to do that next time. People don't feedback ever. And they don't analyze the way they speak. If you're the kind of person who can't speak properly, you're the kind of person who doesn't analyze their own behaviors in life. That's what I would say. If I see somebody who can't 
make me understand why they think what they think. I'm going to sit and say, okay, well, you're not the kind of person who analyzes their own life. Now, do I trust you? Mm. Because let's say we start a business together and it all goes wrong. Are you going to come to me and say, I made a mistake. I can do better. This is the mistake I made. Or you're going to sit and say, well, the environment was hard. It Something was a hard did, business yeah, yeah. environment. Wasn't in my control. Yeah, some garbage yeah. and just cope. You know who the worst for this? Oh, I'm going to jail. Here we go. Going to jail. Women. Women take no self-accountability for anything. I'm a misogynist. It's true. No, they don't take self-accountability for anything. And, and they don't because they don't have to. Because they are blessed with beauty from God. So they have a superpower, which is their beauty. And mm -hmm. their beauty allows them to get away with being completely lacking self-accountability because as a man, you have to be competitive. And the only way you can truly be competitive in war, which life is, is to be self-accountable, to blame yourself for everything because that puts you in the highest possible mind state to compete against everyone else who wants yep. the things you want. For sure. So you have to, as a man, self-analyze and be self-critical. Your every move. Every move. But as a woman, you don't because you're hot, mm. right? So they're not good at it. And I'm not insulting them. They're just not used to it because they get to blame other people and blame everything else because their beauty allows them to get away with it. And that's the reason I said, my, my girlfriend said, would you ever let me drive your car? I said, never, never, ever. She goes, why? I am a good driver for a girl. And I said, yeah, my four-year-old's a good speaker for a four-year-old, but I wouldn't put him in front of a stadium to talk. So it doesn't matter how well you could drive for a girl. You're a girl. But that's not even the reason. The reason I wouldn't let you drive my cars is not because I think you're going to crash. I do. But that's not even what it's about. If I lent my boy a car, if I let a man a car and he crashed it. He would take he, accountability for he'd it. He'd take accountability for it. He would come to me and say, there was a crash. This happened. I'll fix it. I'm sorry. Even if he believes it wasn't his fault, he would still, if he's the kind of guy I know, have enough self-accountability to go, this idiot pulled out of nowhere, but I was speeding. Mm. I was going fast. It's a fast car. I'm going to fix the car. I'm going to get it sorted. I'm going to pay for it. If a woman crashes the car, that's not what you're gonna hear. It wasn't my fault, you don't understand, it wasn't he me. Pulled he out pulled me. out and I didn't do anything wrong and he pulled out and I'm like, well, how are you gonna fix it? I'm not gonna fix it because he pulled out and I didn't know why are you yelling at me? This isn't my fault, ah. And I'm left with the mess. So why am I letting her car in the first place? I'm left with the mess and she's gonna say it's not her fault. She'll crash into a tree by herself and it wasn't her fault, the tree, the tree. The tree did something. Bro. It's, it's cloud world. <laughs> so anyone who's not self-accountable, I don't trust. Mm. So <clears throat> back to, let's avoid the, the women's subjects, it always gets me in trouble. Back to men. If you're a man who's not self-accountable, I don't trust you. So if you're a man who's making a mistake as permanent as not being able to speak and convey your ideas correctly, well, then I don't trust you as a person. Mm. And that's probably the best thing about money. People often ask me what the best thing about being rich is. And there's not much that's good. Private jets are good because it's convenient. It's like getting an Uber. There's no airport garbage. Supercars are fun. I love supercars. But most other rich stuff is garbage. Like caviar's crap. Champagne's crap. What do rich people do? Golf, I tried caviar croquet, one time. I it disgusting. It's all shit. Yeah. I don't, I don't like... One of the best things about being rich is I don't have to talk to anyone I don't want to talk to. If someone comes to me and goes, Andrew, we can make a lot of money together, but I think they're a nerd. That's what I talk to. Mm. It's great. I don't want your money. I would rather not have money than sit and talk to a nerd. You're a dork. Oh, you're a vegan. Get fucked. <laughs> oh, but we'll make money. Don't care. I don't want the money. I am principled now, which goes back into my earlier point about why I want my fans to have money, because if you have money, you're principled. If you're a brokey, you'll sell your soul, which is why I don't want my fans to be broke. That's why I have the real world so they can join and make money, because if you are broke, you will say, I'm not a fan of Andrew if it benefits you financially, which means you're no good to me in a war, because now you're a traitor. I don't want that. So one of the best things about being rich is I get to be exceptionally principled and I get to also not talk to anyone I don't want to talk to all of the time, which I do truly enjoy. It's one of the best things about it. Andrew, what would you say to this, yeah? As we wrap up this podcast, I want to ask you this question. Let's just say the Matrix do pull their third strike on you yep. and they succeed. Yep. How do you want the world to remember you? And what's the impact you want to leave on people? I feel like I've lived a good life. I'm 37. And I would argue that I've lived more life than most 100-year-old men. I've done everything, been everywhere. I've made a mark, made an impact. What's life for? Well, life is to have children and to leave an impact and to teach your children things. Bunch of kids, done my job. So I don't want anyone to think I'm sad about it. It was a decision I made. I feel like as a man, you should always live for something bigger than yourself. I feel like that 
The true masculine imperative is to find a battle worth fighting for. That's why men have always gone to war, and some men died. That's how it's always been for men. As a man, your life shouldn't be about quantity. It should be about quality. Mm. And it's trying to live as long as possible, but being that porridge goo in the middle is not as important as living a shorter amount of time and getting to be the T-bone state. So I want people to understand that I believed I was doing the right thing. I'm not a perfect person. Perhaps I made some mistakes, but I believed I was doing the right thing at the time. And that I don't have any regrets about it. And that I would like people to live from, learn from my example and live true to themselves. And I think that the world can be a beautiful place when you're true to yourself. I really think that a lot of depression and a lot of sadness and a lot of discontentment with consciousness comes from the very simple fact that most men are not true to themselves. And when I say that, I mean, I can, I can, answer, I can say this in a funny way or I can say this in a serious way. I'm gonna choose. It was both. Uh, let me choose funny first. Cold. You wanna fuck a bitch, fuck a bitch. Oh, you, you have, I love her, I love, I love my girlfriend with all my heart. Yeah, I wanna fuck her today. I fucked her, boom, I don't love her.